There's a big storyline in the third season about rescuing Dwight Ennis, who's interned in a French prison. We were in this incredibly beautiful vaulted ceilinged room in Bishop's Palace in Wales. Very dark and moody and atmospheric. The convents and the churches were pulled apart by the revolutionaries. We just tried to add a bit of destruction. We've painted the walls, tried to make it look grisly and grim. We've put in a lot of old pews, straw mattresses and blankets and a few bits of broken statuary. The makeup calls got earlier and earlier with having the beard put on and I've got scurvy as well. We've got fantastic wig people on the team, we've got fantastic prosthetics makeup artists. I've had my lip bust, this is like a, got a little bit of silicon here which is sort of uh, as if my tooth's come through my lip. I'm supposed to have cracked my head, uh, I've got a big sort of graze across here. I got, I, got, I got very much beaten up by the guards. We'll use prop weapons where we obviously need to, rubber weapons. We always hide the gap when we strike at people so it looks like they're hitting them and everything's choreographed and safe. Hugh and Dr Ennis spend a lot of time together and they become good friends. And Hugh begins helping with the other wounded who come in. Dwight was dealing with some rather horrific amputations. In this kind of hand-to-hand -hand combat, you're looking at injuries from musket and pistol balls and also slash and stab wounds from sabres. We're all in hell now. And isn't it extraordinary that here we are running a hospital in 1795 in a place that was a hospital in 1644. History has repeated itself in Poldark. We've got armourers, we've got live guns, we've got stuntmen. It's a real dance of all departments and Aidan always brings a huge amount of energy. It's fun to run around with the lads and hold guns. It's real kind of swashbuckling. Hero stuff. This is the sort of thing you did when you were ten years old and you pretended. Yeah, this cab was an Indian. Absolutely. And I've got a hook. I told you I'd have someone up my sleeve. Stand back, that! Leave it to the expert. We're going to be blowing off these doors. Well, we've got a little bit of gunpowder so you see a visual effect. We've got some charcoal with that so there's lots of golden sparks everywhere. But we're using compressed air. So we've got two air mortars behind aimed at the door. The door will be scored so it fragments as it comes out and it'll blow apart. Just during one of the takes of the cock of the gun just got caught in my finger and pulled it back and broke it. So yeah, broke my hand. What's amazing is just the amount of flame and smoke that comes out of here, and then how much pressure you have to kind of use to make it spark. And but they're really hard to get well, going. Smell as well. Yeah. Aren't they? They're actually pretty scary even to fire the blanks because they let off this giant explosion right by your face. I'm being shot and uh, also Drake, one of the other characters, is being shot. We had about two foot past the door where a canal um, was running down, so I was just convinced that if I just lose grip on Hench, I'm straight back into this canal. Cut, cut. Very sad to lose Hench. I mean, I love them as a character. Well, oh, Miss John, terribly. Sad to lose your Hench. I know, one of my best buddies on the show. Get it all. all my scenes are with Aiden, so we get on really well. And I'll miss that, you know, there's a good camaraderie. I wish him and, and the show obviously all, all the best. I'll be an avid watcher and just be a fan, I guess.